and it is now time to honor and present our honorary degrees recipients. Board of Trustees, Mr. President and Chancellor, visiting guests, we are honored to introduce Mr. Lincoln D. Gomez. Mr. Lincoln is from Aruba, where he is a partner at Gomez Coffee Law, a leading law firm in Aruba. With over 27 years of experience, he has provided unparalleled legal advice and representation to various clients, including governments, state-owned companies, banks, aircraft leasing companies, intellectual property owners, and the hospitality sector. An internationally recognized multilingual author and columnist, Mr. Lincoln has published extensively on aircraft finance, labor law, constitutional law, real estate, and competition law. His academic credentials include two LLM degrees in international tax and financial services from the Thomas Jefferson School of Law in California and one from the Universitat Van Aruba. He also holds bachelor's degrees in biology and chemistry from St. Leo University in Florida and diplomas from the Wharton School of Business. Fluent in English, Dutch, Spanish, and his native Papiamento. Mr. Lincoln is also an aviation enthusiast who integrates his passion into his legal practices. His commitment to sharing his expertise extends through his books, blog, and podcast. He co-founded Digicel Aruba, the island's first private mobile network operator, and has served as president of the Aruba Bar Association and the Museum's Aruba Foundation, where he played a pivotal role in opening three new museums and promoting the island's cultural heritage. Mr. Lincoln's contributions to making Aruba's laws more accessible to non-native communities has, have been significant. Through his multilingual publications, which he regards as a form of community service, he has gone above and beyond, enhancing the inclusivity of the laws across various communities in his home country and beyond. His dedication to, the, to this work exemplifies his commitment to serving and uplifting the community. As a testament to his work, I can mention that he presented his latest publication in Spanish to Spanish-speaking embassies and consulates in Aruba immediately before joining the commencement ceremony. Beyond his professional achievements, Mr. Lincoln is a dedicated athlete and a devoted father, homeschooling his two sons, Gavril and Gavin, and enjoys the companionship of his Boston Terrier, Tobio. Please join me in welcoming and congratulating Mr. Lincoln D. Gomez. Another recipient of our honorary degree in law is uh, Mr. Thomas M. Carden. Mr. Thomas Mark Carden is the founder and director of the American International Tax Advisors. He is enrolled to practice before the Internal Revenue Service. He has over 25 years of tax and financial industry experience. He started in 1995 in his father's CPA firm and progressed to being the international expatriate tax specialist for a surviving remnant of Arthur Anderson. He has a bachelor's in global business management from the University of Phoenix and the Juris Science Masters in International Tax and Financial Service Law from Thomas Jefferson School of Law. Throughout his professional life, he has endeavored to serve his clients by providing them with highly specialized tax and financial services skills. His international work requires him to be well informed, therefore he is always researching and implementing effective knowledge-based skills that have helped his clients save thousands of dollars each year. Mr. Carden started the AI tax advisors business in Thailand about five years ago with just a briefcase and a small desk and no clients. Today, his professional services are in very high demand throughout Eastern Asia and his staffs and associates have passed way over 25. 
Among the staffs of Mr. Carden are many young staffers who often need lots of training. For the most part, he patiently provides the necessary training needed immediately after being hired. He trained them how to operate professionally by providing them with the right knowledge and tools to help them succeed at their work. He treats them like trusted family members. Once they come to have some professional understandings of their work, he gives them the needed space for them to operate within their own spheres and comfort space without super micromanaging them. Mr. Carden's fundamental philosophy lies in the simple idea of treating all people with respect. He believed that once people are treated well, they will do their best to produce satisfactory work output. He trusts his staffs and treats them with respect all the time. And in turn, they love him and affectionately call him Sir Thomas. Sir Thomas is a very hardworking man, very dedicated to serving people, honest and trustworthy who love his staffs and associates. Ladies and gentlemen, I am pleased to present Sir Thomas Mark Carden to you. Thank you. That's a, a tremendous uh, biography that had more than I'm used to. Uh, the, the one thing I have gotten to learn, though, in success is part of this. And uh, Dr. Williams is a, uh, I'm very, very proud to call both a friend, a colleague, and as a board member in Gavala for, for many years now as well. But, but it always emphasizes one of the lessons I've learned in life. Surround yourself with great people. And great people are not the people who are the most successful. They're not the most wealthy. They may not even be the most intelligent or hardworking, but your humanity to them is the most important thing. If you surround yourself with people who whose humanity is important to them, you will succeed in life because no one succeeds alone. You need the people, the loving people around you. And that unfortunately is all my staff and my wife as well to succeed in life. And thank you for this honor, uh, Dr. Williams and Rice. Thank you, Sir Thomas. Um, and now we'll call on again Dr. Valencia Johnson to present our remaining honorees. Thank you, Raza, for that. And um, congratulations, um, Dr. Carton, again, and um, Mr. Carton and Mr. Gomez um, for their <laughs> honorees. I'm so proud of you. And thank you again for all of your support with Kabbalah <laughs> International University. Now, we're about to start our next honoree. Um, her name is Harriet Melita Cooper Cummings. She's an educator, musician, musical organist, and volunteer extraordinaire. What a privilege to salute a woman who has forged an outstanding legacy of service to her family, community, and country. Harriet Melita Cooper Cummings, a lifelong educator, and musical organist was born on November 7th, 1931 in Cape Palmas, Maryland County, Liberia, to the union of James H. Cooper Sr. and Florence E. M. Brown Cooper. Growing up in Harper City, Cape Palmas, she attended school from elementary through college there, obtaining her bachelor's degree in education from our Lady of Fatima College. Over the years, Ms. Cooper Cummings has demonstrated compassion and leadership in several ways. As an educator, she served in various capacities in Harper City, first as a teacher and later as a principal, and also later as a district education officer. Working on the Curriculum Material Center in Merlin County, Liberia, she spearheaded the creation of educational materials relevant to Liberian children, publishing her booklet, A Primary Reader, in September 1983. Additionally, Ms. Cooper Cummings is a accomplished musician playing both the organ and piano. No doubt her musical talents have handed down to her youngest son, Lloyd, who's distinguished himself as an excellent organist. In 1992, 
Ms. Cooper Cummings and her late husband, Matthew E. Cummings, left Liberia for the United States due to a civil unrest in that country. They made their home in Hillcrest, Rockland County, New York. While there, she became an active member at St. Paul's Episcopal Church in Spring Valley, New York, serving as a supply organist, member of the Daughters of the King, the Episcopal Church women, and helping on the Christmas pageants at the church school. When her husband, Matthew, got sick and had to go into a nursing home, Ms. Cooper Cummins became volunteer at the Northern Metropolitan Nursing Home where her husband was staying. Even after her husband's passing, she continued to volunteer because the residents loved her and appreciated her musical contributions as she played the organ and piano, sang songs for with the resident, sometimes arranging to have a priest join her. Her consummate volunteer, Ms. Cooper Cummins, would spend one day a week at the nursing home and four days a week as a foster grandparent at Summit Park Elementary School in Rockland County, New York, East Rampo School District. The children affectionately called her Grandma Harriet. <laughs> In 2016, the Foster Grandparent Program recognized her 16 years of service. Reflecting on her life's work some, some years ago, Ms. Cooper Cummins attribute her faith to all the wonderful opportunities and events she have had. I volunteer because I still want to be active and make a contribution to society, Ms. Cooper Cummins stated. I really enjoy giving my time, she says. To be sure, her legacy of service has touched generations and made a positive difference in lives of countless young people, first in Liberia and then in the United States. One of her more well-known prestige protégés is Reverend John Harmon, the recently installed Episcopal Bishop of Arkansas. Ms. Cooper Cummins shares her love with five sons, Matthew, Fritz, Harrington, Jenkins, and Lloyd, and stepdaughter, and 22 plus grandchildren, and 28 plus great-grandchildren, and numerous foster children. Today, Ms. Cooper Cummins is a non-Agerian. <laughs> she lives with her son, Harrington, and daughter-in-law, Melinda, Miranda, in New York. We honor her example and service to humanity. We are also grateful that God has blessed her with a long life. And we honor today Ms. Harriet Cooper Cummings. And her honorary degree was in education. Now, <laughs> our commencement speaker and the best in the business <laughs> in law and my friend, Mr. Thomas J. Moronic Jr. Honorary degree in law. Mr. M Mr. Moronic Jr., my friend, and always will be, is known as the as one of the top high stake trial attorneys in Maryland, especially known for his criminal defense work, including significant jury trial wins, defending those accused of sex crimes and gun crimes, amongst many. His career includes defending Baltimore City police officer in a televised assault case that made national news and a federal gun case where his results led to a government appeal and ultimately the Supreme Court weighed in on his issues. Mr. Moronic graduated with a bachelor's of arts degree in journalism from the Un University of Maryland College Park and a JD from the University of Baltimore School of Law. 
Mr. Moronic is barred in the state of Maryland, U.S. District Court of District of Maryland, U.S. Court of Appeals for Fourth Circuit, U.S. Supreme Court, and the U.S. District Court for the District of Columbia. Mr. Moronic speaks fluent in English and Spanish. Again, Mr. Moronic focused his practice on criminal defense and DUIs, bankruptcy, family law, serious accident and personal injury cases. He also helps business owners with a variety of issues from debt and credit issues to restaurant and retail leases. He and the firm, and his firm also partner with other firms to take on serious medical malpractice cases. Mr. Moronic is a recipient of a superb AWO.com rating of over 10.0 which I will contest to, the 10.0, yes, and has been awarded the distinguished, the distinction of being, of name, the National Trial Lawyers Top 100 and Top 1 <laughs> and number one in my book <laughs> and has earned the Better Business Bureau and Lead Counsel accreditation as well as being named one of the Annapolis 40 finest in 2013 by the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. He was selected in 2014 for the Daily Records VIP list, recognizing professionals who are successful by 40. The award given out by an independent panel of judges considers a nominee's professional achievements as well as community work and the extent to which they contribute a positive energy in Maryland before reaching the age of 40. And Mr. Moronic received so much accolades. And his motto is our most important client is each and every client we represent. And he has received numerous of honors from the USCA Best of Baltimore Criminal Defense Attorney list, the Statistic from Brosis Foundation, Naples, um, 40 Finest, and many others. He also, he, he also has professional associations with the, ba the Baltimore County Bar Association, the Hartford County Bar Association, the Anne Arundel County Bar Association, and the National Association of Criminal Defense Lawyers. He's an active member, Baltimore City Bar yeah. Association, Real Estate Bar Association, and a host of others. And we want to honor our commencement speaker with the honorary degree in law. All right, Mr. President, I hereby present the following candidates for the honorary degrees of Doctor of Philosophy and Education and Doctor of Laws. Thank you. By the virtue of the authority vested in me by the Charter and the Board of Trustees, as President of Tavala International University, I hereby confer upon you Dr. Thomas Marinick, Jr., Lincoln D. Gomez, and Thomas Mark Cardi, an honorary degree of Doctor of Laws. Harriet Melita Kamis, an honorary degree of Doctor of Philosophy in Education, giving you by my authority and that of the whole university full powers to do all things which appertain to the status of an honorary doctorate degree, with the rights, privileges, responsibilities, obligations, and immunities relevant thereto, both here and elsewhere. Congratulations, you may now wear your hood. <laughs> your father's here, you founded the Bada Nation, and you have your honorary doctor degree. Thank you so much for your service. I will give this opportunity to uh, Mr. Lincoln Gomez to give his thank you speech. Uh, to the Board of Trustees, uh, to the President, and the faculty of Cavalli International University, I want to say thank you for conferring upon me this great honor. This great honor that in some way recognizes my, my work, my achievements, my contributions to the community, my publications over the years. It's a great moment for me, but 
I would like to only thank you for this, but tell you and let you know that you've made an 84 year old man, my dad, sitting with me today in this room, witnessing this, a very happy man. And you also made a bunch of aunts and uncles and brothers and sisters, extremely happy, extremely proud. <laughs> I have a room full of friends here with me that are all wearing big smiles and uh, that are looking at me. And I would like to thank you also for bringing this honor to me, but also bringing this joy to all these people that I just mentioned. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you, Mr. Donald. Now, I'm going to give the floor to Mr. Maroney to give his thank you speech. I uh, just want to say thank you sincerely to the Board of Trustees, to Dr. Johnson, to the university. This incredible honor. It's been amazing to speak in front of you today. And uh, the esteemed colleagues I'm winning this award with, uh, Dr. Gomez, uh, who just spoke. Um, I love Aruba. I, it's one of my favorite places to visit. And now perhaps I, I will drop by when I go. <laughs> There's a uh, one happy island, correct? Am I right? Yeah. Happy, happy. <laughs> but uh, and and congratulations to uh, Mr. Cardin as well. Um, it, it it's it's fantastic. Anytime you can earn a, a a degree, doesn't matter what age you are or where you are in life. It, it's great to do it, and and this is very prestigious, and I'm so honored. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I know that Mr. Carden already made some speech, but I'm going to give the floor to him again. One of the most proud things I've been is able to be affiliated with uh, Kavala National University uh, for many years now. Uh, Dr. Uh, Williams has been a, a very good friend of mine for a long time now as well with it. And, you know, the family is very much there for everyone to this and realize that, that that is a benefit to you uh, and the graduates as everybody moves forward in life with this. Again, sur surround yourself by great people and you will succeed in life in ways that you can't imagine. So those opportunities will come to you and those people will help them lift you up and move you up, move forward with life. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Carter. And Ms. Melita Cummings, prepare a thank you speech for us, and we're going to share it to you. This is being done on behalf of my mother, Harriet M. Cummings, who's been honored today. She says, I'm very grateful to Kavala University, the staff, and everyone who made this possible. All of my life, I have been, I have enjoyed being with and helping others, and it is a natural part of my being. With this honor comes an overwhelming feeling of gratitude, appreciation, and love of the idea that I've been thought of as deserving of this great honor. I've always had ideas, thought of possibilities, had constant dreams to improve the lives of the have-nots and whoever crossed my path. Being recognized in this way makes me want to pinch myself to ensure I'm truly awake and not dreaming. It means so much to me. Dreams are possible, never give up. Let's all keep on dreaming. See you at a mountaintop. My love and unspeakable gratitude go to the faculty of all at Kavala University. Thank you very much. Okay, now that the long wait is over, uh, let's give our honorary recipients a round of applause and welcome them to CIU Kavala. Thank you. 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 Thank you